Hello, my name is Gwen Masklee. I'm a gastroenterologist in training and PhD student at the Department of Gastroenterology and Hepatology and Medical Informatics at Erasmus University Medical Center in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. I've been asked by the editors of Gastroenterology to discuss our paper entitled Risk of Upper Gastrointestinal Bleeding from Different Drug Combinations, which is coming out in the October issue of 2014 in Gastroenterology. You may be well familiar with the increase in risk of upper gastrointestinal bleeding by use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, in particular non-selective NSAIDs and to a lesser extent the COX-2 selective inhibitors. However, what I think is less known among doctors is the fact that other drugs may increase the risk of UTIP as well. Now, what is also striking is the fact that clinical guidelines suggest to avoid certain drug combinations, such as NSAIDs with corticosteroids, but actually we have very little knowledge about the risk increase when two drugs are combined. Would the risk of UTIP be added by combining drugs or is there some synergy and extra risk present? We simply just don't know because we need a very large sample size to address this question. What I'm going to tell you in the next minutes is whether and how much this excess risk of upper GI bleeding is for drug combinations of non-selective NSAIDs, COX-2 inhibitors and low dose aspirin with certain drug groups that are reported to either increase or decrease the risk of upper GI bleeding. We were able to answer this question since we combined data from over 20 million subjects and included almost 115,000 upper GI bleeding cases, whom were followed on average between 4 to 10 years. We performed a self-controlled case series, which is a really neat study design because it only includes cases and each case serves as its own control. We estimated as a measure of the relative risk the incident rate ratio during drug exposure compared to non-exposure. These drug groups, the non-exposure, consisted of 11 drug classes, such as corticosteroids and aldosterone antagonists. Second, we estimated the magnitude of excess risk during, during concomitant drug exposure. Among seven population-based electronic healthcare databases, we identified almost 115,000 patients with upper GI bleeding. Looking at the results in this graph, the relative risks of UTIP with monotherapy of each drug are shown. On top of the graph you see the reference, consisting of no use of any drug of interest. All drugs increase the risk of UTIP. As you can see in the marked red box, monotherapy with non-selective NSAIDs was associated with an incidence rate ratio of 4.3, which was higher than monotherapy with either COX-2 inhibitors or low-dose aspirin. Interestingly, the risk of UTIP for use of corticosteroids was of the same magnitude as non-selective NSAIDs, with an incidence rate ratio of 4.1. The increased risk of UTIP by gastroprotective agents is likely explained by the phenomenon of channeling of GPA prescriptions to patients at high risk. A second explanation could be protopathic bias, because GPAs might be given as treatment for first symptoms of UTIP. Now, what do I mean with synergy in excess risk? Let me explain to you by the following figure. As you can see in this graph, the relative risk is on the y-axis and the different drug groups on the x-axis. No use of a drug is considered a reference. Both low-dose aspirin and NSAIDs increase the risk of UGIP. But what happens when two drugs are combined? Is the risk of UGIP a simple sum of the separate risks, depicted by the yellow and blue boxes, or is there some additional risk which you could not predict? In other words, is 2 plus 2 equal to 4, or 2 plus 2 equal to 5? Now, this additional risk, depicted as the pink box, is what we estimated in the study and defined as excess risk. This figure shows the excess risk. Green means that there is no excess risk, and from yellow towards red means the presence and increasing strength of excess risk. You could use this figure to decide on appropriate painkiller therapy. For instance, if you have a patient on corticosteroid therapy who has a headache, you would rather give him a COX-2 inhibitor instead of a non-selective NSAID. This is because we didn't only observe the highest relative risk of UGIP for the combination of non-selective NSAIDs and corticosteroids, but also the highest excess risk. You may wonder why. Well, we know from experimental studies that corticosteroids inhibit ulcer healing. And secondly, we know that non-selective NSAIDs are more ulcerogenic than selective COX-2 inhibitors are. Also, when 
extrapolating these results to the general population, out of 100 subjects experiencing an upper GI bleeding while exposed to non-selective NSAIDs and corticosteroids, 6.4% is due to drug use and could have been avoided by appropriate use of gastroprotective agents. The second highest excess risk was seen for the combination of aldosterone antagonists and non-selective NSAIDs. However, remember that although we did not see an excess risk for the combination of aldosterone antagonists with COX-2 inhibitors, this does not mean that there is no increased relative risk of UTIP. In fact, the relative risk was 4. Finally, I would like to briefly mention that selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors were estimated to have significant excess risk of upper GI bleeding when combined with non-selective NSAIDs and COX-2 inhibitors, but not with low-dose aspirin. So, in conclusion, we observed among over 100,000 upper GI bleeding cases that concomitant use of non-selective NSAIDs or low-dose aspirin, but not COX-2 inhibitors, with corticosteroids and aldosterone antagonists were associated with an increased and excess risk of UGIP. Second, we observed that concomitant use of non-selective NSAIDs, COX-2 inhibitors or low-dose aspirin with SSRIs was associated with a significantly increased risk of upper GI bleeding. The findings from our study are applicable to doctors in daily clin clinical practice and should alert them to decide on appropriate painkiller therapy while balancing the risks associated with, with concomitant drug use in order to minimize upper GI bleedings. Our results are especially valuable in the elderly who are likely to use multiple drugs concurrently. I would like to thank you for your attention.